Welcome back. Now, the Metropolitan Police is holding an urgent review into its handling of a rape case after it was revealed that detectives failed to hand over vital evidence. Thousands of text messages, some of which undermine the alleged victim's case, were not provided to legal teams, causing the case to be thrown out of court. Well, the accused, Liam Allen, says he feels let down by the system. I'm joined now by the criminal defence barrister, Narita Barra, to discuss this a bit more. How common are these kind of cases? They shouldn't be, but unfortunately they are more common than those in the public would believe. Um, I'm a defence barrister and I regularly see cases of this nature where people rely on defence barristers and defence teams to ensure and undertake um, a, a, a robust review of, and, and take on the prosecution and insist on having the evidence, which is often we're told is not disclosable. So do the prosecution have to hand over this kind of information legally is it a legal requirement well there's a test and the test and the procedure is supposed to be um, uh, one that effectively results in ensuring that justice is done so the test is under the criminal procedure and investigation act the officer in the case uh, has a duty to disclose and to investigate and he will look at the material and decide whether or not it's disclosable the, the crown prosecution lawyer will then go on to take undertake a further review and ensure that the police officer has undertaken the task properly and then and the prosecution as a whole will be saying this meets the test of disclosure we should disclose this to you because does it um is the test does it undermine the prosecution case or does it assist the defense case and in this case there seems to have been a complete lack of that test being applied properly and in this case in particular the defendant obviously it was thrown out of court but how much stress does this put someone under it must be enormous it's enormous stress for anybody that's charged with any sexual offense and as i say the defense teams then have to take on the pressure of that because they need to make sure that they are challenging the prosecution throughout from the beginning to the end um, why is this happening and why is it happening not only in Liam Allen's case but in a number of cases which we see in the criminal justice system is because of under resources um, the system is effectively breaking down we have a position where um, police officers are under resourced they're dealing with 20 30 cases and in this case he would have the officer would have had to sat and go through 40,000 messages and but you would have thought case. that would be kind of basic policing I suppose it is basic policing but un unfortunately because of um, under resourced police officers are no longer trained in the way they used to be in relation to handling of cases and investigations and then we have under resourcing in the Crown Prosecution Service and the defence teams are the those who are accused are, are wholly reliant on good defence lawyers um, to ensure that they are challenging the system but again now with the cuts coming through the criminal justice system to the defence side it's likely that the uh, quality of lawyers on the defence side will also decrease Gosh, it seems like a very tricky situation. Obviously, in this country, we've got a system where you're innocent until you're proven guilty. Is there an argument that in rape cases, the accused perhaps remains anonymous and you can't name them? Um, yes, there's an argument, and it's an argument that's gain gaining a great deal of weight because um, uh, the difficulty with a, any allegation of a sexual nature is the moment the allegation is made, the person's reputation effectively is, um, is, is ruined because the public perception is no smoke without fire. So once that's where we start from and then the difficulty then comes with um, effectively if somebody is found not guilty at the end of the process, if their name appears all over the media, their name appears in the papers and all over the internet and that can't be removed. And I suppose that has a big impact on their life and yes, their future. Yes, and their future. And, and a number of my clients who have been acquitted, rightly so, have come back and told me um, that they want to remove the matters from the internet because when they apply for a job or when they meet a partner, obviously they, um, they go on the internet and they see their details. And do they manage removed. that? Or? Well, no, um, it, because it is a matter of public record. So once it's in the, uh, on the internet, it's on the internet. Are you noticing that more cases are being brought by the CPS now? Well, um, as a matter of a fact, 50% of the cases that make their way to the criminal courts, um, uh, especially the Crown Courts, are cases of a sexual nature. So the, there's an increase in the number of cases. Why is that? Well, um, I think that there is 
because of the current climate we're in and also um, the police and the Crown Prosecution Service not wanting to take robust decisions about um, what should be prosecuted. They are more willing to let those matters go to a jury or a tribunal to be decided upon. And I was seeing yesterday uh, the defence barrister in Lee Manon's case, he was speaking, he said he'd been in his job for decades and this was a particularly uh, horrendous case in his view, he thought. Do you think that this stands out? Well, uh, um, that was Jerry Hall who prosecuted the case, yes. Um, I, I, does it stand out? For me, I'm a defence barrister and I practice on a daily basis and I should be, I should be saying to you, yes, this is, this is a case which is appalling. But unfortunately, for those of us who practice in the system, um, it's something we see regularly and the, the, it, it, it's imperative that we as defence counsel and defence teams um, challenge and make sure that those miscarriages of justice don't happen. And it sometimes requires us going back and being persistent and challenging um, the prosecution and, and seeking directions from the judge. Indeed, well thanks ever so much for your expertise. Thank you. Okay.